Hello, I'm Ryan from Buster Beagle 3D. Today I'm going to do a review of the Autor Laser Master 2 Pro. This is an upgrade to the Laser Master 2 that I did a review of a few months ago. Once again, this machine was sent to me for free so that I might give my opinion on it. I was even considering not accepting this machine since I was happy with my original Laser Master 2. You can also check out the video where I compare the two machines and give you a rundown of the differences. This video will be purely about this machine, so let's get started. The Laser Master 2 Pro came packaged in much the same way as the last machine. Everything was well packed and came with all the necessary hardware and tools you need except for a Phillips head screwdriver. I was originally just going to film a time lapse of the build of this machine, but to be honest the instructions that came in the box were very small and a little difficult to follow. Because I had some difficulty reading the manual, and because I had already put the older version of the machine together, I thought it would be beneficial to make an assembly video which you can find in the video description. You can also go to the Autor website for clearer instructions and larger images to help you with the process. The Laser Master 2 Pro has an engraving area of 400 by 400 millimeters. The machine has an upgraded all metal body with the feet as well as the X and Y axis plates now full metal as well. The aluminum extrusion also has the dimensions printed directly on them. As you can see on mine, measurements are in inches instead of using metric. To be honest, even though I'm in the United States, I do all of my 3D printing, CNC, and laser engraving in millimeters, so I actually would have preferred the metric marks. I'm not sure how you specify that while ordering, or if it's just based on the location that you're ordering it from. Ortur has thought about improving the cable management as well, and now includes the wires inside of a drag chain, which does keep everything nice and organized. There is also a full metal enclosure around the motherboard that I will talk about in just a minute. The laser itself is Ortur's fixed focus LU2-4 with an output power of 4.5 to 5 watts. The module also contains second generation FAC. The company claims that this reduces the laser spot from 0.23 by 0.23 millimeters to a tighter 0.08 by a 0.15 millimeter spot. This is one reason the machine can be faster. Speaking of speed, the Laser Master 2 Pro can engrave at an impressive 10,000 millimeters per minute. Essentially, over three times faster than the previous model. Now, in the test that I performed at the max speed of 10,000, it wasn't leaving enough time for the laser to fully engrave the lighter wood that I was using. I would think that this might work with dark paper or similar materials. Even using the machine at a lower speed of 6,000 millimeters per minute would still be engraving at two times the speed of its predecessor. Part of this also has to do with the upgraded 32-bit motherboard running the new Ortur Laser 1.5 series firmware. Along with the speed improvements, the firmware also adds two safety features including an emergency stop button and a flame detection sensor that will sound an alarm if a flame is detected. This is all in addition to the old safety features of the previous version, which are still part of this model, including the stopping the laser if it detects the machine is bumped. It will also turn off the laser if it loses connection to the USB, or if it detected a laser is on, but not moving for an extended period of time. The Laser Master 2 Pro is also now 24 volts. The company says that this is to be able to allow for more add-on accessories such as an offline controller and other future accessories. If the company is watching this video, might I suggest some sort of air assist? I think the safety feature I was most excited about was also the simplest. The laser module now includes a built-on laser shield for safer operation of the laser. I would still recommend wearing the included safety glasses when operating the machine but it does add an extra layer of protection. This gives me some extra peace of mind that my kids can't pop into the work area and see the laser, and don't forget about your pets. Like I was saying before, the laser module is a fixed focus laser. This means there is no turning a dial to adjust the focal length. 
The machine comes with an aluminum spacer that you place between the piece that you are cutting and the base of the laser heat sink. You do not measure from the tip of the laser, but from the heat sink to the piece. So I had this laser engraver for a little bit now, and it's been about a month since the first part of this video. I wanted to have some time with it where I could learn a little bit about the issues that come up, as well as seeing what I might be able to modify or contribute to this machine. If you have seen some of my other content, you would see that I like to tinker, so this is no exception. The first thing I did was create a 3D print where you can mount the laser engraver to your spoil board. Mine is meant in such a way that it is removable, but will allow me to put the machine back in the exact same spot every time. This also allowed me to create a grid pattern that I burned into my spoil board, which will help with the placement of the pieces I want to burn into. I also created a test pattern file that you can use on different materials to test your speed and laser power settings. You can check out the links in the description where you can download those for free. The next thing I really wanted to try with this machine was to somehow add some sort of uh, laser air assist. The reason you want something like that is to remove the smoke and other debris from the beam of the laser so it's not interfering with the working of the laser itself. I have seen other mods where people set up fish tank air pumps and other similar things with tubes and other attachments that direct air right to where you need it. My approach is a little different and I wanted to keep it as simple as possible. What I did was I bought a 12 volt server fan and designed a 3D print that attaches to the top of the laser mount and hangs behind the x-axis and blows quite a substantial amount of air directly at the laser beam. I added the wires in a loom with the laser wire and zip tied it to the drag chain. You really just plug it into a power outlet and that fan really takes off. It seems to do a really good job as an air assist. You can find the link to the STL and which fan I'm using in the video description. The last thing I wanted to try to see if I could improve was a full cut by lifting the piece off of the surface of the spoil board to prevent the back side of the part that I was cutting from charring too bad on the rear of the piece. I also wanted to see if this would improve the overall cutting power of the laser by having that separation. So what I did was I went to Home Depot and I bought this, this um, I guess it's some sort of grate cover to a AC unit. Uh, and, it, and it just has a metal pattern on it. But what it'll do is when you put it down, it'll leave space or air between the surface that you're cutting and the bottom. So when the laser goes through, it's not, it's not running out of oxygen because it, it has oxygen at the bottom of your cut. That also keeps it from just catching on fire, you know, at the bottom of your piece and charring the underside of your piece. So what I ended up doing was taking that exact same piece and painting it black because what was happening a little bit on the piece that I was using was on this one, the laser would reflect off of these shinier pieces and then kind of burn in areas where I didn't want it to burn. So uh, what I ended up doing was just taking the exact same thing using as matte a, a paint as I, as I could get at Home Depot at the time. Maybe in the future I'll try some of that black 3.0 that is supposed to take out a lot more reflections and see if that might uh, improve the, uh, the laser cutting in the air. As you can see here, it does a really nice job of cutting through the part. The bottom was cut with the part directly on the spoil board and the one on the top is cut with the part in the air. Notice the less charring on the top versus the bottom of the cut. The last thing I wanted to go over before my final thoughts on this machine is some troubleshooting issues I ran into. I also wanted to preface this with pointing out that I received this machine slightly before its release date, so there may have been some things that have fixed after I received the machine. The thing I found to have an issue with was that I needed to upgrade the firmware on the machine. The version that was installed on my machine was a few revisions back and I was running into some issues where the machine would throw up an alarm during a burn because the motion of the machine itself was setting off the bump detector settings. The firmware I had on my machine was not allowing me to change the settings to make the bump sensors less sensitive, so I needed an upgrade. I would not recommend doing a firmware upgrade 
unless you're having a specific issue with the machine. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. In my particular case, it was broke, so I needed to fix it. And the instructions for updating the firmware were pretty straightforward and easy to do. So, for my final thoughts on the machine. I have to say that, it's, that I've been having a lot of fun with the Laser Master 2 Pro. I do feel that it's a pretty nice upgrade from the previous version with a better laser, better speed, all metal construction, laser shield, etc. I already have a few projects lined up for the machine and I look forward to trying out new materials and uses for the laser engraver. The footprint of the machine is fairly large, but it's so light it's easy to move around and I even hang mine up on the wall when I'm not using it to keep it out of the way. You want to make sure that you use it in a very well ventilated area, which is why I love how light it is so I can bring it outside and use my laptop to run a job on it. Again, lasers are dangerous. You want to make sure no people or animals look directly at the laser spot without protection. I would recommend wearing the safety glasses even with the shield since it's better to be safe than sorry. Again, there is an affiliate link in the description that helps the channel out if you do decide to pick up the machine. But either way, I hope this helped you out. So that's it for now. Please do like, share, and subscribe. If you like this video and stay tuned for some 3D printer videos coming out shortly, as well as some other injection molding related videos as well. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you next time.